All right, coaches, welcome to uh, my YouTube channel. Um, each week is a different theme. This week's theme is talking to the guys that are putting out material. You know, kind of the, the idea behind it is I'm a big for coaches by coaches guy. So obviously I put out material and I buy material and I watch free material like every other coach does. And so I wanted to have on kind of the guys that are always on the other end of it that are producing things that don't always get to talk as a coach uh, on this week. So today I've got Coach Alba. I make sure I get his name correct. I think I've got, I always read it, but I got to pronounce it. <laughs> a lot of you may know him by his name or may know him more by his brand, which is Chief Pigskin, which is, is a, a really, I've gotten to do a few things with him and uh, first class all the way. So, Coach, those who may not know you, let's talk about you, and then we'll kind of shift gears to Chief Pigskin later on. Man, well, thanks for having me. I always say that I don't have much interesting to say, but it's, listen, anytime somebody asks, even if it's in regular conversation, somebody just asks you about you, you know, it's an honor to for someone to sit and listen to you and your story. So, I, I think you never say no to these type of things, and, and an honor to be talking to talking to anyone, man, but quality coach like yourself, coach. So happy to be here. Uh, I'm just an old ball coach like everyone else that loves it. Of course, I know you're up in the state of Illinois, which I believe you're now getting to play football. So talk real quickly. Just give us a quick bio of your football coaching career, you know, where you've been, where you are now. Yeah, well, you know, uh, first of all, just got into teaching so that I could coach. But man, I, for when I watch all these young coaches nowadays, they're so far ahead of where I was. I didn't really even start paying attention to I was 27, 28. And I happened to become a defensive coordinator up in the Chicago suburbs under a guy who was, I mean, you want to talk about taking it serious. Right. And he kind of almost had to like shake me awake and say, Hey son, I got some football to teach you. I got real ball to teach you. And uh, boy, we worked hard for two years, two, three years there. Um, and then I was, uh, you know, on fire, dying to be a head coach. And so I took a job in Podunk, Illinois. I mean, uh, Milford, Illinois, the type of place where I had to, I'm a lifelong Illinois guy. And I had to look on a map to find Milford. I had no idea where it was. Uh, so I was just dying to be a head coach. So became a head coach. And uh, I've been head coach at one, two, three, four different high schools now. Um, and I'm not a head coach right now, uh, with my son coming through my son's a junior. Now, uh, it just was in a situation I didn't feel great about. I wanted him somewhere else. And so now I'm an assistant and I teach at the school where my kids go now. And, uh, so that's the fast bio of me as a coach. Good, good. And hey, coach, that's a, you know, I, an interesting story from a lot of guys that, uh, you know, my, my kids are coming up through and I can see how that could be a, something you need to think of long and hard about is being the head coach when your own son is there mm -hmm. and meet him. Great young man too. And he's a pretty good ball player too. I, I yeah, got thank you. hang out with you a little bit up there in Illinois, but uh, let's kind of move to the other part of where a lot of people probably at least on this world of the internet know you from, and that's the company you started. Talk real quickly, you know, when you kind of jump off that ledge, some of us like me do it on accident. And some of it, I think like you have more of a plan, you know, plan of action at least. So talk a little bit about what your goals were with it, where it started, where it's going, you know, just those who may not know Chief Pigskin, just kind of give us a quick overview of it. Yeah, well, you know, as I started the first year I became a head football coach, 2008, and I didn't have, I bought $120 worth of championship productions videos. It was three videos. I feel like I got something out of one of them. Uh, but man, I was in my, I was 29 years old and I couldn't afford, I had a, you know, I had two kids and I couldn't afford anything else. And I just thought, and now you mind you, you gotta remember in 09, YouTube is like two years old now at that point. Right. So internet and everything and online stuff was, I mean, there was stuff, but boy, you want to talk about, you know, nothing was really available. So, uh, I just knew I had to keep learning and I didn't know I couldn't afford it. So I just started traveling. I started calling guys and emailing guys. I've always enjoyed marketing, like studying marketing. Um, and I just heard, heard about people and the hustle, right? The grind. And I just started emailing and I said, I'll drive. And then I started driving all over the place. And I didn't know what it was going to be. I just was collecting stuff and putting it online. 
And eventually, you know, it, it's like, okay, these things are costing me money still. <laughs> so I either need to stop traveling or turn it into something that can sustain itself, right? And so that's kind of where it began to morph into what it is today, 10 years later, um, an online clinic. And uh, that, that's always been the goal, like a sustainable opportunity for me to like, not, not just keep learning, but I really want to I want to be able to, if the situation's right, kind of brag and say, mm, do you know anyone that watches more clinics than me type thing? You know, it's not that I would ever be in a situation that would come up, but I like to be listening so much, right. That, you know, you know, when push comes to shove that, and you know, cause listen, winning's hard and competition is fierce and I'm an incredibly average dude. I'm like, how else am I, do I compete? expect to be able to compete at a high level unless I can not only am I learning in the off season, but most people don't know someone who's learning more than I am the type of type of attitude that I've wanted to take into it. So that's kind of what keeps me going because listen, there's so many times I've wanted to quit and I'm like, I just, I just can't quit. That, that's all I just do. I just can't quit. Yeah, no coach. And I, being somebody who's been around you, you can kind of get the idea of genuine, I think is the word that comes across to me. And I think a lot of guys that would watch your stuff and I know you've got multiple different things. So um, let's talk a little bit about, I know you got a YouTube channel guys can go to and watch. And of course you have your website, which is where you'll have probably a little more in depth information uh, and talk just real quickly, just a quick preview of where they might go to get that. And then I want to talk about some of the other aspects of your job that maybe a lot of coaches don't really think about until they're in that. So. Yeah. I mean, right now, YouTube is, is like just live shows. Like just coaches hanging out in a community and building that and we go live 12 times a month. Uh, we've been doing that since the summer. Uh, so that's really what is on YouTube, available on YouTube. And then on our website, clinic.chiefpigskin.com is a true online clinic. And uh, you pay for a membership. Um and I've just always been at it. I mean, back in 2018, before nobody else, this is way before COVID, right? Before anything's really like significant online, man, I just committed all out into just everything we were going to do is online, just pushing it online. Um, and I've always been adamant that I always, I want to pay guys for speaking, right? I'm going to travel with them. I'm going to pay them to speak. But the only way to be able to afford to pay guys to speak is that, you know, the, the cost has to come from somewhere. So it costs uh, a membership. And so, um, you know, I, I've, again, just working out the economy of it. I want it to be fair to three parties. I want it to be fair to the coach who's speaking. I want it to be fair to the coach who's learning. And I want it to be fair to the coach that's doing all the work mm -hmm. and my family. Right. And so I got, I'm, you know, figuring that out, setting a price for that. Like what is fair to all three? I've just always been adamant that if I've always been fair to all three parties, Ultimately, in the long run, I'll create something that works and can can be sustained. I could get money hungry and grab up, gobble up a few extra bucks this year, but does that going to set set me up for something I can sustain until I'm 65, 70? Uh, probably not, right? And so it's just been that I've been in this for the long haul. Uh, most money that comes from it gets pushed right back into it. I barely take anything, and all for that reason, so that I can do this when I retire. That's the goal. Sure. Sure. And let's talk about, uh, so on that, I know, cause you came and visited me at Cersei. I've seen some of your other ones where you visited different guys. And so I'm assuming that's probably the best part of your job is getting to be with other coaches and, and gain all this knowledge. What are some of the harder things you didn't think about when you kind of went into this that, Whoa, that was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah. The, man, I don't know that anything, any one part of it is hard because you know, all these skills along the way that you learn from editing to creating artwork, you know, and digital marketing and all those things are skills that you learn along the way. The hardest part is not quitting. I mean, that's it, right? To do this for a long period of time, to build this into your lifestyle so that, you know, I've got a wonderful wife and she knows this is part of our lifestyle. It is, hey, what's, you know, when it goes on the calendar, that's a chief pigskin shoot. You know, there's no eye rolling from the wife. That's just, oh, I get, you'll be gone. And I get it. And that's, it is what it is, right? So the hardest part has been allowing that to become part of the lifestyle for me to load up the car 
drive, fly halfway around the country without batting an eye, creating that into the lifestyle was probably the hardest part, right? Because now, and even as I've started to look for help in the last couple of years, I mean, these, you know, most guys are like, wait, you want me to drive how far? And they're like two hours. Like that's two hours from me. And I, and I'm going two hours like that. You know, I drove like nine hours down to see you. And that felt like one of my short ones, you know? So, but that, but I get it. Like that's become my lifestyle. That's been 10 years in the making. Um, and I don't bat an eye on hopping on a plane and, and flying to New Mexico, you know? And so, th- yeah, the difficulty is the, the don't quit because it, it's like coaching. You make a couple bucks, but if you do the math on the hours that you're putting in, mm-hmm. it's not a good deal. Right? It's not a good deal for you. Um, so that's just it. Just like that. It's, is it part of your life? Do you truly love you? Cause you have to love it or you're going to quit, right? right. You're not going to keep going. So those are the only difficult parts is, is surviving those rough patches where it doesn't make sense to keep doing. Okay. I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, favorite, coach that you have got to visit and you can't not that you would say me but you can't say me you got to say some coach you went (laughs) that you said man that was like crazy I didn't expect it and it was just so awesome man there is you know so you got to understand over 10 years I think I've been to almost 250 schools and I don't think some guys realize how many we've been to and some guys that just see the chief big skin logo on twitter and just, you know, and you just, you know how it is in life. You brush over things a thousand times, but they'll start to look at what we've got. And they're like, oh my gosh, like, I can't believe how many places you've been. So there's no way I could pick one, but so many guys have blown us out of the water all the way from, I mean, I got to sit in on um, James Delgado, head football coach at Riverdale high school in Fort Myers, Florida. I got to go to his first hour lifting class. And I want to tell you no human, I'll say this with confidence. No human does more with athletes in 50 minutes than this guy. It was the most beautiful synchronization of hard work, culture. It was, coach, I was blown away. James Delgado, fine football coach, Riverdale High School in Fort Myers, Florida. But I'm like, if I ever get a chance to take over a weight room, how do I justify not just doing what James Delgado does? He's unbelievable. Um, but you know, other guys like, uh, Jonathan guest at Elka Christian, uh, you know, Eagles landing Christian high school, just outside Atlanta, they've won five straight state titles all the way to Nick Pelham in South Carolina, where they've won five straight state titles. He, his defense and the way he approaches everything defensively, it's unbelievable. Um, again, I could just keep going with guys that truly are hitting home runs. It's like home run hitter after home run hitter. Um, but that, you know what, that might be the hardest part of this is how humbling it is to come into contact with guys, guy after guy, not just one guy, multiple men that are doing your job better than you do it. And it's a job that you take very seriously. That has been hard to handle. It was very humbling. And um, honestly, like, it's like a little bit, you kind of have had, went through a period where I fought a little bit of depression, not true depression, but a depression through it. Like I'm really serious about this job and I'm not as good as these people. Um, hard to, hard to, hard pill to swallow. Sometimes these guys are, I'm just kind of blown away by our whole nation and our nation is playing this game at a high level. And it's not just uh, one team here or there or one state. It is nationwide. Yeah. That's the, I think the, there were not a lot of great things about COVID actually probably maybe three, you know, but, one of them was the fact that a lot of coaches realized there's platforms like yours, there's platforms all across that now they don't just see the state. You know, we see our state, right. like Mount Rushmore's of our state, but then when, when you get to do what you do and see, wait a minute, every state has these Mount Rushmore guys, it is it can be overwhelming. I, I, know, I know just from doing the little bit that I've done. I can't imagine doing it on the long term you've done. So let's talk quickly. So uh, I know you have a ton of stuff on Chief Pigskin. So is your goal basically that, hey, you got into coaching, you're you're 21 years old, you don't know anything, or you're 60 years old and want to learn one thing, we have something for you. Is that kind of the goal of Chief Pigskin is to have something for every coach? You know, I don't know that I've – 
I've never really packaged it like that or thought about it like that. I only think about it through this lens. I want to promote coaches and I believe that what we do is special and I want guys to be able to put themselves out there. So I want to provide a platform where guys can speak um, and I can give them a hundred bucks for speaking. That feels good to me. And I want to create something that just keeps going. You know what I mean? So it's like every time I, a guy asks, what do you want me to speak on? All I can ever say is whatever excites you. Because to me, I don't care if one year we, we only get like 300 on O-line presentations. If we have 300 straight guys that are passionate about it, all 300 will be good, right? And so um, I just never think about, well, we need more of this type of stuff. We need more of this. I just, I just go, hey, where can we go? Who can we visit that's excited about football? And what do you want to speak on? Because again, I, looking at it through the lens of, of, I'm really trying to look at it through the lens of 2040. In 2040, Chief Pigskin will be the most vast collection of high quality video. Imagine the size of this in 2040, right? It'll be, it'll be a monster of knowledge and, and of, of info. And so I just think in that long run, and I'm like, over time, Asking guys to speak on what they're excited about will kind of slowly cover all bases. No, that's cool, Coach. Just, just one, I don't know, and, and I'm sure the people that are listening don't know, how much stuff is on Chief Pigskin? Like, if you go in right now, I'm going to be a subscriber to Chief Pigskin, and I am a subscriber to Chief Pigskin. But if you go on there and click on it, and you actually started looking through how much stuff is on there, how much stuff do you have right now? Well, right now, we're it's about 190 full-length presentations on clinic.chiefpigskin.com. Now I also have store.chiefpigskin.com. There's probably 50 more videos there. And those are available to purchase by download. Um, and they're only separate because we used to do more just downloadables. And it's kind of like with each coach, I got to work out the right situation to be able to eventually bring their stuff over on the clinic. But right now we mostly just shoot for the clinic. Um, it's 190 videos. But it's like, you know, I've got this little hard drive here that sits on you know, I've got a hard drive of these full of videos that I shot pre-2018. And everything was different than it was more like five-minute video here, 10-minute video here. You know, and it's just hundreds and hundreds of videos. And I slowly bring those out from the archives. I might use them on YouTube and use them for, for fun stuff. But um, yeah, in the last three years, we've, we've probably shot, yeah, we're, we're, we're kind of on the average right now of about like 50 new presentations per year. Um, and listen, and, and the thing about me, again, I'm this average Joe, this average coach with no budget. So all I do is go as fast as my budget will let me go, right? And so I'll try to take a, a road trip a month. I can pay about six, I can afford to pay about $600 a month in, in speakers. And so I'm like, and also that, like what, I want to keep coaching and teaching. So I'm like, how, I need to set myself at a pace that I know I can sustain to. Right. So what is this pace I can sustain? So right now about 190 videos, full length presentation. Nice. Nice. I've got two more questions for you coach and we'll let you go. One uh, almost personal for me, but other guys as well. How do you do both? You just talked about coaching and doing the side deal. How do you do that? No, you're exactly right. It's a, I think it's, I try, I try hard, although it's like everything. It's uh when, when I was a head coach, it's easier now that I'm not a head coach, let's face it. Uh, but when I was a head coach, it was hard to focus on teaching when I was in the middle of a football season, right? You know, so uh, if I have a big shoot coming up this weekend, it's harder for me to focus on teaching that week, right? And so I just try to do my best to compartmentalize it and pour myself into one and then pour myself into another. I'm pretty restless soul. Um, so the, the routine I've been working on lately has been I try hard to just pour myself into my teaching from eight to three. And then I go over and put in three, about three hours a night over at my studio in Champaign, which is about 15 minutes away. And that's where I go live on YouTube. And that's kind of my time right now to go work on chief pigskin. Um, you know, so I don't do stocks and bonds and I do do baseball cards now. Cause I love that, but I just, the, my investment, my retirement plan is, my blood, sweat, and tears through Chief Pigskin, um, and it, I don't get hardly anything from it right now except a lot of knowledge, 
but I really think that by the time I'm 65, it should be something I can leave something to my kids. And I feel like that's uh, me being a good steward of, of my, um, my resources so that I can leave something behind to my kids. Cool. I, I always tell people ask me that a lot too. And I just say, I don't golf. I don't hunt. I don't fish. And so all that time, those guys are doing that. Right. This is kind of what I do. Anyway, yeah. I appreciate it. One more question for you, coach. So, you know, if a coach is watching this and, Hey, I think I could contribute to chief pigskin. What's the kind of steps they need to go through to get in touch with you, or they want to find out more about your company. How can they get in touch with you? What's the, how do you, what's the protocol for that? Yeah. Well, on Twitter at the chief pigskin um, on YouTube, search chief pigskin. Um, you know, we're always live there. We're always looking for guys to do like a 30 minute home clinic. And what this has turned out is what's kind of worked out is a home clinic is just 30 minutes from your bedroom, from your home like this. And it's not a full length presentation. You don't get paid for it. We don't ask people to pay for it. We put it up for free. That's a good opportunity for us to get to know a guy. So like anybody that wants to get their name out, I always tell them, man, start speaking. And if you don't want to take the time to create your own YouTube channel, which is work. And if you're only going to create one video, it's not going to get seen very much. Right. So we, I think we're a platform where a guy can say, I want to get my name out there. I got some things to say. I want to create a video. We're a great platform to reach out to us and we'll get you in front of a camera and you can create a home clinic. Uh, again, you won't get paid to do it. It gives you a chance to, to speak and get used to that. And we give, give it to other coaches for free. And then we kind of, of those guys, the guys that stand out that are great speakers, we kind of start thinking, okay, time to go take a visit there. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, try to fit, try to feature your school type thing. Awesome coach, man. I appreciate your time. And I know, you are in the middle of the season, so you may have some things to go get ready for. When is week one for you guys up in Illinois? Well, we start March 3rd, so uh, that's when this, everything's really kicking off and uh, first game March 20th. Um, but, you know, I'm a, I'm a safeties coach right now, and, and uh, I've been fortunate to be under a head coach that is – I mean, you want to talk about consistency from one year to another. It, everything is very consistent, so it's almost like – it's almost like we just can, we know what practice is going to look like day one and day 30. Uh, everything's very consistent. He's a hall of fame coach. Um, so our preparation is not a lot. I get to honestly, I'll coach safeties from, from three to five, which I try to do with all my effort. And then Friday night, honestly, I just get to watch my boy play and, and try my best to keep one eye on the safeties and say, don't let him get, don't get beat deep, right? As long as I do that, I get to keep watching my son play ball. So I'm just excited to watch him play. Good, man. Well, I'm glad they're getting to play, Coach. I, I was worried for a little bit. Yeah, we were too. Well, Coach, thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you, Kenny.